Hello everybody and welcome back to some more NASCAR Heat 5 custom championship season without the playoffs where we are officially in the final 10 races of the season. Um, we're not exactly doing all that great obviously as you can see if we check the standings uh, we're down here in sixth place and we're 113 points away from Denny Hamlin. It's not looking too good for us honestly it's looking like Denny Hamlin's probably going to win the championship and if he doesn't it's probably going to be Kyle Busch but uh we're still going to try our best anyways. At the very least, hopefully we can probably get up there and compete with Ryan Newman Truex for the top three. Now I am going to go back in here and I am going to take the player tire grip fall off and put it back on, uh, actually not less grip. That would be terrible. More grip like we had before just because the car handled absolutely terribly last time out at uh, Kentucky. And uh, I really don't think it'd be that enjoyable to, you know, probably DNF in every race for the rest of the season. So we're going to change that back. And then we're also going to change the difficulty. We're going to put this up to 103. I don't want to put it up to 105 because when we were on that, we were struggling to, you know, really get to a decent finish, but I don't want to keep it as low as it was because otherwise we might just cruise to a bunch of easy wins and I don't want to make it too easy. 21st, absolutely nothing out of the ordinary there. I don't know why I even really bother qualifying other than the fact that obviously starting 21st better than starting dead last, but basically no matter what we do, we're basically confined to the midfield. We got out qualified by Daniel Suarez. That says something about the quality of our car and or my driving. But uh, looking through the actual qualifying results, we can see that Truex actually gets the pole this time. So maybe it'll be a different Joe Gibbs racing car that actually wins today. Okay, coming to the green flag. And I have no idea how many laps this actually is because I did not pay attention at the uh, menu. It is 39 laps. We have 43 laps of fuel, so technically we should not need to pit. And uh, I'm just going to try and make sure I don't poke a hole in the nose of my vehicle on the very first lap because... I feel like on a track like this, it's basically like a faster ver uh, version of Martinsville, but also not as fun because it's not an actual short track. I don't know. Does anybody actually like this racetrack? You know, like I'm not trying to, you know, say it's a terrible racetrack or anything. I just have never had fun driving this in any NASCAR game before. And I feel like a lot of that might just be because of the physics of NASCAR Heat, uh, the series as a whole, where it doesn't really work very well on tracks where you have like heavy brake usage. And New Hampshire is one of those tracks where that is the case, mainly because, you know, it's so flat. Um, I don't know. I've never really enjoyed it. I don't really enjoy watching it in real life either, just in those races, because for the most part, they don't seem all that entertaining. Um, I'm pretty sure New Hampshire was the last race where, uh, you know, I think Jeff Burton, 2001 or whatever, uh, led every single lap. Obviously, uh, probably not all that exciting. I didn't start watching until 2004, but I can imagine that uh, I would not have enjoyed that race either if the, uh, the same guy led the entire thing. And I just can't seem to get around Austin Dillon. So this is not a great start for us, but uh, at the very least, we're not falling back. Okay, I'm starting to actually get very concerned for some reason, as we still can't get around Austin Dillon to save our life. We are so much slower on the straightaways. Look at this. Daniel Suarez is just going to go flying right alongside us, and we're going to get to the corner. And I mean, for the most part, in the corner, we're completely fine. In fact, we're actually probably faster than all these guys. But on the straightaway... I have no idea. It seems like we're going so much slower. Like, we're going 10 miles an hour, probably more. Uh, slower than these cars on the outside. They just have, like, an extra gear. This thing is so slow. I don't know if that's just because the default setup in this thing is like that. Uh, if that's the case, and, you know, that's unfortunate. But uh, it would not surprise me. And now we're probably going to lose position here to, uh, to Benedetto. As we're not going to really have much of a good run on the outside, I don't think. I don't know. Actually, maybe we need to use the outside. Because we really need to make up all the ground we can on the uh, in the corners because this thing, it really does feel like we're down on horsepower. It makes no sense. Okay, that was not as bad. Maybe I was just getting really bad exits of the corners. But uh, it was so strange for the first, you know, handful of laps as I'm going to, you know, rear end Christopher Bell. I appreciate that. We probably got a bit of damage. I appreciate that, uh, Mr. Uh, 95. But yeah, I don't know if we're just down on horsepower. Obviously, you know, having arrow damage like that's not going to help. But uh, we are, like, still slowly moving up. So at the very least, even if the car doesn't feel good, we should still at least be able to get a halfway decent finish today. Barring, you know, any meltdown where we uh, somehow DNF for two races in a row. Okay, I'm trying to consider just diving into the inside of Austin Dillon here. I think we're going to just because we've been stuck behind this guy for the entire, you know, first seven laps of the race. And that's almost a quarter of the race. Not really. It's more like a fifth of the race. Quick math. But uh, we are finally around him. And the exits of the corners still aren't great. That was our best lap so far. Uh, okay, that was definitely not the way we want to 
enter the corner. You see it whenever you hit the brake in this game, like the car wants to turn in some random direction, even if you're not like trying to turn, because obviously if you do that in real life, you know, that's not a great thing. You want to brake in a straight line with cars like this. But uh, based on the engine, you know, in Unity, and however we have this program in all the NASCAR Heat previous games, if you hit the brake, the car just kind of wants to turn to one direction or the other. It can't really seem to contemplate just slowing down while going in a straight line. It really wants you to go either to the left or to the right. And for the most part, it seems like it's always in the opposite direction of where you'd even want it to go. Uh, not that it'd help, obviously. You don't want it turning for you because then you're just going to like lead yourself into a drift, which I think is what was the case in like NASCAR Heat 1 or NASCAR Heat Evolution, whatever the first one was, uh, especially because that, that, that game was terrible. In that game, you would literally drift around the corners here at New Hampshire. That was like the fastest way around the track because you couldn't really keep any kind of traction. It was so bad. They did fix that over time. But the way the braking mechanics work still really doesn't make any sense uh, where the car doesn't handle the way you would ever expect, which is something I'm really hoping they fix in the uh, the next NASCAR Heat game. Well, it's not going to be called NASCAR Heat 6, but uh, like NASCAR 21, whatever they call it, just because if the physics, you know, the physics don't have to be entirely realistic, but they do need to make sense because uh, when they don't make sense, that's when it becomes frustrating rather than, you know, just, you know, something you got to learn. Because you can hit the brakes and you have no idea what's going to happen. The car could snap to the left, it could snap to the right, uh, depending on what track you're at. And at that point, you know, you just kind of avoid those tracks, which can be a shame because, you know, you want to enjoy all the content that's in the game. But that becomes pretty difficult when the, uh, the physics don't really allow you to. Okay, so this is where that tire wear is really going to come back to help us again. Because, of course, with the way we had it set up for pretty much the entire season, uh, up until like the last few races where we've been messing with the settings, uh, we've always had a long run in car. Um, and so it's obviously working out in this case because uh, we're about to make our way up towards the top 10 But I think we might have found a good bounce where I'm pretty sure we're not on like pace to just get up there and get around Kevin Harvick In fact, if I look at the overall speed, we might not really be losing time to him Which means we probably have the pace to be up there But it's gonna take some strategy and probably you know putting in some good laps for us to actually do that The thing that I've always found uh, kind of odd when we've been using these settings is that I put in my better lap times in as the tires are worn. Oh my god. I'm... Okay. Uh, we're probably in trouble now. Thanks a lot, Brendan. I'm, we're probably not even going to get a caution. We're going to need a caution now. We have a lot of damage. That is terrible. Our engine's at 91. Our arrow's at 79. We're going to be down on so much speed. I had to jinx it, didn't I? I was half expecting a DNF there. Not going to lie, I'm kind of surprised we didn't get that. Um, at this point, I don't think we can do a whole lot. We're basically stuck here in this position at best because there's no way we're going to make up any ground, I don't think. Um, I mean, obviously our car looks like it's just went head on into a wall because effectively it did. I don't know what's up with this game and not wanting to throw out cautions when we just see somebody parked, you know, uh, perpendicular across the road. But uh, hey, there you go. Thanks a lot, uh, Brendan Gon. Hopefully, uh, you know, I don't... DNF as a result of that, that's, you know, for some weird, I don't know, whatever, whatever else would happen after this. Honestly, if we were going to DNF, obviously, it'd be during the crash. The car is not handling any worse. It's just, it's going to be down significantly on speed. So, uh, I was already complaining about being down on, like, horsepower on these straightaways. That's only going to be about 10 times worse now because, you know, our engine is basically inside of our front seat. Okay, well, that's even more concerning. We actually might DNF. Yeah, without a caution, I think we're going to DNF and or our engine is just going to continue to get worse and we're going to lose more and more ground um, because our oil temp, it's going to be above 260 and it's probably going to get worse over time because uh, you can see now, even in the corners, it's not really getting that far below 260 and after, you know, a few more laps, it's probably just going to stay there completely. It's going to slowly tear down the engine and we're really just in a really bad spot. We can't pit. Honestly, if we pit, we're just going to be so far behind, it's not going to help. Um, what we really need is a caution, but I wouldn't expect that to happen considering, you know, Brendan kind of just died and basically took me along with him. Um, and the game's like, yeah, that's fine. You, we can stay green. There's nothing going on. Don't worry. Everybody's, everybody drove away. They're not dead. So, you know, we don't need a caution for that as, uh, the 21 is going to go driving along by us. I would not be surprised if we can probably still get a half decent finish as long as we don't DNF, but we're not going to finish, you know, in the top 10. And we're probably going to fall down a few spots from where we're at currently. But uh, maybe, you know, the fact that our tires are kind of overpowered compared to the AI might help us. Maybe we'll actually be able to, uh, you know, at least keep this current position. 
Yeah, we are officially at the point where uh, our oil temp doesn't really go down enough to not like have that warning, which means I'm pretty sure it's just progressively damaging the engine more and more, which means every bit of horsepower that I thought we were already lacking is uh, probably just being slowly drained from our car. So that's not great. But uh, I'm still going to keep driving because, again, we don't really have any better option. If we come in and pit, it's going to take so long to fix the car that we're going to be in last place. Uh, and if we DNF, we're going to be in last place anyway, so it doesn't really make much of a difference. We're just going to try and hold on for the best finish that we can, as even Daniel Suarez, who's actually having a really good race. I think he's kind of overpowered in this game, if I'm being honest. Uh, he's trying to pass us for 13th. The other problem that's bound to happen at this point is that even if we did get a caution... Uh, this would take, I don't know, probably over 45 seconds for them to fix, which I mean, hey, by the way, very impressive to basically replace the entire engine in that amount of time. But uh, that would probably put us in last place on the lead lap anyways, uh, which, you know, probably not 40th. There's maybe 30 cars on the lead lap at this point. Uh, Kevin Harvick has been up there for quite a while, but uh, we would lose a lot of spots either way. I'm just kind of curious as to whether or not the car can actually make it that long because... It's very steadily over 260 for like 90% of the, you know, the track now. It does occasionally go down below 260 at like the exits of the corners, but that's not exactly, you know, very comforting. Also, our tires are not exactly doing all that great, but considering the AI should technically have even worse tire wear, I think that might still, you know, be to our, uh, you know, to our benefit. You know, what does it say about Quinn Hauf that uh, our car is basically dead and uh, we're still, you know, able to... Pass him even on the straightaway, I think. Actually, let me not jinx myself here. We're still faster. Oh my gosh. I swear I didn't do it. Yellow flag. I didn't do it. I don't know what just happened. Kurt Busch decided he wanted to, you know, turn into a wall, so he turned straight left into it. I'll take it. I have no idea what happened. His tire, he, he maybe had a tire go down. I think that's the thing the AI can have happen. Uh, it's only 12 seconds of repairs. That's actually, you know, impressive. We are going to get right side tires. We don't need any fuel. We're going to lose a lot of spots as a result of this. In fact, we're probably, like I said, going to be on the uh, tail end of the lead lap. But we do have to do this. It's probably going to help us out in the end. Um, so let's go ahead and pit. See where that puts us. 26th. Not actually at the end of the, the lead lap because Kurt Busch had to probably get an entirely new car or something. But yeah, this isn't exactly great. But we're going to see if that helps us. Oh my gosh, what just happened? This track sucks. So you know how I said that the physics in this game doesn't make any sense? There was randomly a bunch of wheel hop when I, uh, you know, shifted up there and the car decided, hey, I'm going to turn straight to the right. So that's awesome. Uh, we already have more damage now on every single side of the car as well. That's even more impressive. For a second, I thought we were going to DNF. I've expected a DNF twice in this race so far. So honestly, the fact that we're like, what, 31st? Probably better than I would have expected. Brandon Gaughan somehow still in the race, despite basically being dead. Um, who knows? We're not having a great time in the last race, I can tell you that much. I don't like Kentucky. I don't like New Hampshire. Fortunately, after this, I think we go to a racetrack that I like, but I'm probably not all that good at, which uh, would be Watkins Glen. Okay, we do have more speed than these guys. Can I make a brazen three-wide move here? Get past Christopher Bell, who I'm pretty sure had the free pass, so he's going to be farther back than a lot of the other guys on lead lap. Okay, well, we have an uphill battle to fight. Hopefully, I can at the very least get up there and get some uh, get some positions back because, you know, we lost a lot of time as a result of spinning out on the very, you know, first corner of uh, the restart. Not amazing. Okay, we're only a second and a half back from Michael McDowell now. Uh, we are going to get up to these guys. But there's only like four or five laps left. We're definitely not going to get a great finish. Maybe we can somehow push our way up here to the top 20, which uh, I have no idea. Maybe staying out honestly would have gotten us that anyways, because you could have tried to hold off the guys behind you. But uh, either way, I don't know. This this race did not go well for us at all. Obviously, I have no idea what really caused that spin, other than the car just hooked it straight right, so I had nothing to really you know defend against. We're basically just running into drivers at this point because I don't know the, the game is basically doing everything it can to prevent me from having a good finish, even though we were basically on par for probably a top 10 before Brennan and Gon both tried to assassinate me. And then uh, I guess my own car tried to assassinate me after, uh, you know, Brennan failed the job right after that restart. Who knows? I actually, okay, so I think I know what happened. Kurt Busch didn't decide he wanted to become part of the wall. Somebody was trying to kill me there. 
And when they shot, they missed and they hit uh, Kurt Busch's car, which blew out a tire. And that's why he suddenly, you know, lost it on the straightaway, of all places. Okay, we have a few laps left. We're actually in a pretty decent spot to potentially get a top 20 now. It looks like Joey Logano has gotten to the lead. Uh, I think Kevin Harvick was leading for almost the entire race. So he's probably not going to be too happy about that. But I mean, if it's anything like in the real world, he has won more than enough races this year that uh, he's probably fine. Obviously, in, you know, in-game, probably could use a few more wins if he wants any chance of actually getting up there and competing. And uh, speaking of which, he just gets back to the lead right away. I'm going to go down on the apron because that's a thing you can do in this game because, you know, physics. I'm getting very bold here. I probably don't want to do that because if they just nose me into the wall, probably done for. We are basically right where we started. We're like two positions ahead of that. So, you know, honestly, you could say we've improved our position from where we started the race. But this race was anything but good, if you ask me. Plus, our car is getting very loose on the exit of the corners now. I think this is the white flag. Thank God. This race is... I mean, it's, I would say it's something you want to forget. But it's pretty memorable, considering... I, I have no idea. We could have been dead, honestly. It would not have surprised me if, at any point if we had DNF. There was multiple occasions we could have DNF'd in this race. Looks like Kevin Harvick's going to actually easily win. We're going to dive to the inside of Almirola. Don't think we're going to have enough run to get up to the back end of Johnson. Okay, definitely not because my car got a bit loose. You know what? After all of that, I think I'll take an 18th place considering our car really should have, you know, been in the garage after like halfway through when uh, Brandon God decided to park it right in the middle of the raceway. But anyways, looking at the final results of the race, we can see that Kevin Harvick does pick up the win actually pretty close between him and Joey Logano. As uh, we can see me spitting out in the background that's you know you, we can ignore that this race was kind of a wash but uh denny hamlin kurt bush both in the top four obviously not helping our case in the slightest so actually let's go ahead and look at the point standings where we are back down to seventh place that's not great we are even farther away from the lead all because brandon gunn and kurt bush and my own car this race is definitely something to basically forget uh kevin harvick that's actually only a second win of the season uh, he moves up into fifth in points. Really, him, Truex, and Newman are kind of all in their own small little group. They're battling for third. I'm hoping to become part of that. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, it was not meant to be today. This race went absolutely terribly. Okay, well, that's going to wrap it up for today's video, guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed, you know, the pure chaos, because that's basically the only way we could even begin to explain that race. That was really bad. Uh, yeah, in the next race, we're going to head over to Watkins Glen, which, for all I know, could be significantly worse. Because uh, I'm not great at road courses, although I do really like Watkins Glen. I think it's like the best road course that NASCAR drives at. Yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed. Have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you all in the next one.